Hi, I'm Paul, and I'm a software developer at MathWorks. In this video, I want to share with you some of our recommended ways of loading data from MATLAB into Simulink using root-level import blocks, and to help you avoid some common pitfalls along the way. There are a number of different ways to import data into a model that you could choose from to satisfy your particular use cases, including using a from file, from workspace, from spreadsheet, and signal editor blocks. But for this video, I'm going to focus on loading using root-level import blocks. You might use an import block in this way when you already have data in your workspace, perhaps from a previous simulation that you would like to use as inputs into another model. Now when I say root level, what I mean is the import block is not inside a subsystem or inside a referenced model. You can only load data from the MATLAB workspace into an import at the root level, so if you need to load data directly into a subsystem or referenced model, you might want to consider using one of these other blocks. To get started, Let's take a look at the model we're going to load data into. This very simple model has two root level input ports. We'll load data from the workspace into each and pass the signal into a referenced model that will calculate the moving average. I'll focus only on the loading of data into the ports and I won't really discuss the algorithm, but I'll include all models in an example code and links in the notes for this video in case you want to go through them for yourself. First, we need to create some data in the workspace to load into these ports and I'll create two variables in the workspace, one for each port. The first variable is a time series object with data representing a straight line with noise added to it. I want samples ranging from 0 to 10 seconds with a spacing of tenth of a second. Note how I'm creating the time vector here. By first creating an array of integers from 0 to 100 and multiplying that vector by the increment size. And this matches how Simulink calculates time steps. A common pitfall is to create a time vector using linspace or 0 colon 1 colon 10, which may result in unexpected behavior due to floating point precision rounding, especially when loading into an input port with a discrete sample time. I'll include links for more information on this common pitfall in the video notes. The second variable is a timetable object that holds sine wave data that is offset with some noise. Now typically, You'd try to use the same format for all your variables, but I kind of want to showcase the different formats available in case you're not aware of what's possible, and to show you that it's okay to mix and match. The allowed formats are uh, arrays, structure with and without time, time series, and timetable. However, I recommend using time series or timetables because they're the most feature-rich formats. Now let's configure the model to load these two variables from the workspace. Under the modeling tab, click the gear icon to open up the configuration parameters and select the input checkbox. Enter the names of the variables separated by a comma. Notice that the order here is important. Order in the list matches the port order number. When you're done, click OK to close the configuration parameters. Click play to run the simulation. We can observe the output of the simulation by double clicking the scope blocks. As you can see, we have successfully loaded data into both ports. The loaded data is represented by the yellow curves, and the moving average is represented by the blue curves. Look at how Simulink has logged the data into the workspace. A new object called out is now present. This new object is of type simulation output, and it holds all of the data logged to the MATLAB workspace, including logs out, a dataset object that contains log data for each of the signal logging antenna in your model. You can also use a dataset object to load into a model, which I will show you how to do next. We will use the same model and same workspace data, we're just packing the data a little differently. Start by creating a dataset object, and then add a workspace data to this object using the add method. Don't forget to assign the output to our dataset object as datasets are value classes. Note that there must be one element of the dataset for each input port in the model, otherwise an error would be thrown during simulation. Now we need to configure the model to load the dataset. As before, click the gear icon to open up the configuration parameters, select input to be on, and in the text box add the name of our dataset. Click play again to simulate the model. As we are loading the same data as before, the curves in the scope blocks should look the same. Okay, looks good. As your models grow in size, the number of input ports may start to make the canvas look cluttered. To avoid this, you might consider loading the data through a single port that outputs a bus signal. Let's see an example. In 
In this model, we will load the same data as before, but through a single port and as a bus, and we'll use a bus selector to plug out each signal and direct it to its model reference block to calculate the moving average. First, we need to create a bus object in the base workspace. Open up the bus editor by typing bus editor at the command prompt. Click add bus, and then click add insert bus element twice. We'll stick with the default values for the bus elements, double data type, non-complex, etc. Note that the bus object is now present in the workspace. When loading a bus, the data must be organized in the form of a structure whose leaf elements each contain data for a signal. In our case, we have two signals, so we will create a struct with two leaf elements. One will be our time series, and the other will be our timetable. Note that the names of the structure's fields must match the names of the corresponding bus elements A and A1. Now create a dataset and add the structure as the one element. As before, set the dataset variable as the input in the configuration parameters. Also, we must set the data type of the input port as the bus data type. Let's make sure that our bus selector block is outputting the correct signals. Simulate and observe that the results are equivalent to our two previous simulations. Okay, so that's it. Click on the links in the video description to download the code and sample models and try it out on your own. You can also find links to documentation on various topics discussed in this video, including an example of how to stream big data into root level import blocks. Also in the video description, you will find a link to the root import mapper, a graphical tool that you can use to import data into root level ports. Thanks for listening.